Good afternoon. What a beautiful afternoon. Here we are at the University of California, Santa Cruz, in this fantastic location, 50 years old today. 50 years old today. This day 50 years ago, uh, there was a ceremony. It was attended by 2,000 people when the Cowell Ranch became the University of California Santa Cruz. So some of the people who were actually at that ceremony or whose family members were at that ceremony and some of the original faculty are here today. And I'd like those people who had been at the original ceremony or who's, who had been part of the original faculty or whose families were here at the original ceremony or whose families were part of the original faculty, if your knees will cooperate with you, please stand up and otherwise just raise your hand. <laughs> So many individuals made this possible, came together and worked together, so many people to thank. And one group to thank is the Cowell Foundation. Had it not been for the civic mindedness and far thinking of the Cowell Foundation, we would not be here today at this lovely site. And had it not been for the far thinking of some of the people on the podium, we would not have been here. One of those people who was here 50 years ago is Herb Schmidt, and I'd like to call Herb now up to give his reflections. 50 years ago, he gave the blessing, and today he'll give reflections. Changing, <laughs> changing signs of the time. Uh, <laughs> uh, Provost Crosby, uh, Chancellor uh, Blumenthal, Many old colleagues, or I should say colleagues from a long time ago, and, uh, and friends. Uh, it was a great privilege for me 50 years ago when Dean McHenry asked me to say not only a blessing, but an invocation and a benediction at that first uh, uh, site inauguration. In fact, we actually sang a hymn, Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. And uh, we wouldn't do that today. Uh, as I look back on my remarks, I'm a little embarrassed. There are a lot of these and thous, there's Latin, and, uh, and also it's rather, uh, rather heroic uh, phrases. But in my invocation and benediction, there were some words of vision that incorporated what many of us in uh, the Santa Cruz community thought. Of course, they were better expressed by uh, former Governor Pat Brown and the president of the university, Clark Kerr, but my remarks went like this, uh, that my phrases was, was this, that we hope that this university would shape not only the destiny and future of this community, state, and nation, but in reality of the destiny and future of the world and beyond and I think I even <laughs> and I think I even use the word universe <laughs> high hopes that we have but as we stand here today we know that all of our dreams and all of our visions have far surpassed our imagination in what has happened through the 100,000 alumni all over the world. And so uh, we stand in awe of what has happened during these last 50 years. But we stand at the threshold of another 50 years and I hope many, many, many more 50s. Uh, what are our hopes? What are our dreams? What are our visions? 
Now, originally I was asked to give a blessing, but then I was told a blessing is too much for the university to bear. So it's the reflection. And I uh, serve uh, just for a year to, for old times' sake as the chair of the University Interfaith uh, Council that represents all religious traditions and even we have a secular student alliance. So how does one pray or how does one give a blessing or how does one do, excuse me, a reflection? One of the spiritual practices that all religious traditions and people of faith uh, uh, who have no particular religious uh, conviction that they prize is silence. And so at the ringing of this gong, uh, once for the past, once for the present, and one for the future. Let's pause for a moment of silent uh, reflection so that the dreams that we had then and the dreams of McHenry and Clark Kerr and implemented by people like Paige Smith, Mary Holmes, Hal Hyde, who's here today, that those dreams continue to come true in the future. And now, before we pause for a moment of silence, uh, permit me to give just one prophetic footnote. As I listened to the recording of 50 years ago, I was impressed by Governor Pat Brown's emphasis on free tuition. <laughs> Can you imagine that today? With the astronomical loans that our students are accumulating, it's time to remember that the original master plan for higher education in California included that vision. So as we look toward the future, let's give attention to that. And so let's pause uh, for a moment of silence to give thanks for the past, to celebrate the present, and to have high hopes for the future. Thank you, Herb, and now I call on our Chancellor, George Blumenthal. Thank you, Faye. Now, as I begin, let me first uh, recognize that we have a number of elected officials in the audience today. May I ask you, if you're a ele currently elected official, if you'd please rise and be recognized by the group? So 50 years ago today, hard to believe that 2,000 people gathered right here to, uh, to break ground on the new campus. 2,000 people. It would have been a great experience for those of us who weren't there. My excuse was that I was a freshman in college back in Wisconsin. <laughs> But nevertheless, uh, a, wonderful, uh, a wonderful moment in our history. Um, and what was also striking is the broad support that the beginnings of this campus had from the state of California and from the community, all of whom were excited about the future that this campus would bring both to the state and to the region. Many people worked for years to make this campus happen. 
Starting a new campus is not an easy task. I know that in the case of UC Merced, it took something like 12 years of hard work before that campus opened. Uh, so it is, this is a major effort to start a new campus, and people had to do that then as well. But what people had was a vision, a vision for a new kind of university, a university for the 21st century. That's what people envisioned, and that's what we have today. And the folks here 50 years ago used their imagination to imagine what this university would become. They imagined the offices that were not yet built. They imagined the dining halls and the performance spaces that were not yet built. They even imagined that someday there would be a second college at UC Santa Cruz. <laughs> they also happened to have imagined, by the way, that um, we would have separate quads for men and women students. So some of those ideas were a bit dated. But today, the campus as, is as beautiful as it ever was and as it was ever conceived to be. And think about what takes place here in our classrooms, in our dormitories, in our laboratories, in our performance spaces. Um, these are places that transform lives as people write books, write articles, and learn about what's taking place in the world today. So we should take pride in what we've accomplished in these 50 years. And I know that I feel privileged, truly privileged, to have been a part of the history of this campus. It's rare in these days to be able to have a chance to be a part of something that truly endures, that grows and adapts with time. But that's what a university does. Universities evolve. They evolve while staying true to the dreams of our founders. But we know that the work of a great university is never finished. And we are working now to make sure that the university has a great future over the next 50 years. For example, this year we declared our first ever comprehensive campaign in order to build on our success and build for the future. So this is the first in our 50th anniversary events that we're having. Stay tuned over the next year and a half as we have many more such events that celebrate the first 50 years of UC Santa Cruz. And let me leave you with one final thought. I look forward to seeing you all here again in 50 years as we celebrate the second 50 years of UC Santa Cruz. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce a person whom many of us know, who's a great dear friend, and who had had a role in UC Santa Cruz coming into existence that some of us are privileged to know about. Hal Hyde. If it had not been for Hal Hyde, founding vice chancellor, our beautiful campus might not have been our beautiful campus. It might have been located someplace completely different. Hal took a very important role and continued to play an important role in the development and continuation and flourishing of UC Santa Cruz. Over the last few years as provost, I've been very privileged to have many contacts with Hal. He comes back to work with students and talk to students. He comes back to do things for the university always. And Hal agreed to give us some remarks today. So please welcome Hal Hyde. Thank you, Provost Fay and Chancellor George. I'm really pleased to be here today. I'm pleased to be anywhere. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that anywhere with my marbles, that is. Uh, and memories of 50 years ago. Today we're all here, family again, missing many dear to us who were here that day, but born up today by other survivors who I see around here and the next generation sitting or standing here in support. 
I recall here we stood with our government, state, and local representatives on this hill with system staff and regents, curious, very curious townspeople, <laughs> and Old Blues from Berkeley and our southern branch, all eager to get moving on building this new, different University of Human Scale on this lovely site. Fifty years ago, in the last few months, it was a rough patch for our nation. On November 22nd, 1963, less than five months ago, our young forward-moving President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Kennedy had been in our neighborhood when he dedicated the San Luis Reservoir, and Howard Schantz, who was being considered for staff here, was among those that had met and had a picture with Kennedy. No, this was not a selfie. This was a, uh, a real picture, and Howard was showing it around here to prove it. And this week, a new band named The Beatles had appeared. It was introduced by Ed Sullivan last Sunday night, and already my preteeners were singing the melodies. And maybe I ought to start here now to remember the mood here. Shall we should all sing together, Strawberry Fields together, or maybe we must move on. <laughs> Our campus staff numbered about 20, operating out of a rented, available chemistry building at Cabrillo. At the top of the stairs was Chancellor Dean McHenry, aided by Barbara Sheriff, whom he had brought from UCLA, and to one side was campus architect Jack Wagstaff and campus engineer Lou Fackler, aided by Sally Hegland. And out back was librarian Don Clark, ordering books with help from Eileen Sanders. I had been on staff six weeks now and had a telephone at a chemistry workbench and help from Elizabeth Pinot, who had arrived four days ago as we prepared for this opening ceremony with 2,000 people. We did not have the preparation that we had here today, but uh, <laughs> things do change. I had dispatched accounting officer Joe Pistrone to start and keep our books at UC San Francisco. Paige and Eloise Smith were in the process of being named to Cowell College and they visited on weekends from UCLA where Paige was teaching a full load. From the office of the president and from Dean McHenry, we got our marching orders. They were admit students and start classes in the fall semester of 1965. 15 months to go. Wow. So we hit the ground running, interviewing and staffing up, hiring more architects and contractors, and helping arrangements for faculty who were interviewed by Byron Stuckey, Paige Smith, and Dean. That process we called lion hunting. <laughs> the, pro the purpose was to bag a few high-powered uh, top, top cat lions and uh, like Kenneth Tiemann, and uh, also then fill in with brand new, just getting started, and a few with a little more experience uh, that had PhDs and were and bought into this idea of growing with a campus that seemed small as we grew larger. Dean was a true leader and good listener. He cared about the university. He had a management style between delegation and keeping track. Those are two things you can't always do well, but he did them well. He and Jane worked hard and we worked hard. He cared mightily about our students, about our country and democracy, about the campus site and its trees. Beyond being our demanding boss, we grew to love and respect Dean and Jane. The organization gelled at an event for all staff, from tree trimmers to chancellor, who 
and faculty on board at a holiday bash on Sunday, December 20th, 1964 at, Don, at Librarian Don and Emily Clark's big rambling old home, then even then slated for replacement above Scotts Valley. The organization really began working together by the time the students came next fall, we had together responded to every challenge, and there were ma many from missing the housing deadline, and here that we didn't have the dorms ready, but the students were coming and had been admitted, and so we took charge and put trailers down below on the, what would be our playing fields in, st in a star form, and put a temporary kitchen down off the new field house and got going there with the, with the students which we had. Uh, we also had problems with Black Panthers that were coming around. This is not the cougars that we're <laughs> seeing now that are the research part of this university, uh, but uh, the, some of the issues that were coming out of the ghettos in different parts of our country. We had impacts from the Vietnam War. We had displaced astronomers. We had accidents on Highway 17. We started drama plays at night using the Thiemann loading dock as a stage and auto headlights for lighting. It was a wild, memorable, successful opening when the students came that still serves our memories. These students were and are magnificent. Except for Byron Stuckey, none of the people I have mentioned today are now alive. We owe them our debt of gratitude. Looking at this now, 15 years out, with Dean dying 16 years ago, we can only conjecture what he might say today. For those of us who participated, there's a pride that has become an outstanding research and learning university with over 100,000 mostly proud graduates. <laughs> <laughs> Onward, Cal College. <laughs> Go banana slugs. <laughs> That's not a motto we never dreamed, we ever dreamed. <laughs> and I, I didn't plan with a uh, necktie today from Jerry Garcia either. <laughs> but we are thankful to the many who have been a part of this place now for 50 years and thank you for letting me share with you these opening comments about what life was like here 50 years ago today, thank you. Now it's my great pleasure also to introduce Joe Konopelski. Joe is the chair of the Academic Senate. As you know, a great university has great faculty. And the faculty not only do research and teach in the classrooms, teaching undergraduate and graduate students, but the faculty set the course of action. The Academic Senate has plenary authority over the admissions, curriculum, and graduation of the students. And Joe Konopelski is the head of it now. So Joe. Thank you, Faye. Uh, just a few remarks. Uh, maybe I need these. Um, I, I was, I think, in sixth grade 50 years ago. Uh, so I wasn't here either. Um, but what I'd like to do today, in, and I'll take just a, a, a little bit of your time, I'd like to celebrate, if I could, three different groups of Senate members to whom I believe we owe a debt of gratitude for this wonderful place. Together they laid the foundation of this beautiful campus and put us on the trajectory of academic excellence, innovation, and collaborative scholarship that we enjoy. The first group is the founding faculty, all great scholars who built their reputations at well-known institutions. 
and chose to leave those campuses to come here and be the guiding intellects for the bold experiment of Clark Kerr and Dean McHenry. The next group of faculty, which includes our chancellor, I call the first generation faculty. These are our colleagues who came to UC Santa Cruz in the late 60s and early 70s. They were pioneers. Young scholars who, as opposed to the founding faculty, were unproven and yet chose to base their careers on an untested model of higher education. Many of them probably took positions here against all the reasoned arguments of their peers and mentors as to why it was a terrible idea to come to Santa Cruz rather than a more established institution. Yet, through both good times and bad, we have reaped the rewards of their hard work and belief in this place and what it stands for. For the last group of faculty, I need a prop, and I brought it. This is the university mace. It is, in fact, the symbol of the academic center. The chair of the Senate carries this mace as he or she leads the procession toward the graduate commencement ceremony each spring. Attached to this mace is a silver plaque that you can see from where you are. Inscribed on this plaque are, in fact, seven names. These are colleagues of ours, primarily from the Berkeley campus, but with a little help from Davis and San Francisco. These seven wonderful faculty members work to establish a new division of the University of California Academic Senate here along the coast of Monterey Bay. They help set the tone for shared governance and consultation on this campus. Shared governance and consultation are the twin pillars that define the relationship between the faculty and the University of California and the administration and arguably are the foundation for the greatest public institution in the world. So to these three groups of faculty, four bears to the roughly 500 Senate members we have today, we owe them our thanks for their vision and the will to take a chance for their hard work and for a job well done. Thank you. So a great university not only has great faculty and great alums, but great current students. And I was very happy to hear Hal say how the students have always been fantastic at UC Santa Cruz, and they are fantastic today. I was told that uh, Paige Smith, the founding uh, provost of Cowell, and therefore the first provost, was asked one time, what does a provost do? What's the job of a provost? And he answered, the job of a provost is to love the students. I think it's the job of all of the faculty to love the students, and we do. And right now, we have the president of the Student Union Assembly, Chaz Umer, whom I'd like to invite up to the podium. Somebody whom I'm very, very happy to work with and whom I respect a great deal. Chaz? See if this is gonna. So I'm a little tall, so I have to have to fix this. This is an, a, an honor for me to be out here today. I actually have a letter from the governor himself um, that I'm going to read out. Fifty years ago, my father, Governor Pat Brown, stood at the site with the University of California President Clark Kerr, the founding chancellor Dean McHenry, uh, UC Regents, elected officials and community leaders to dedicate the site for a new University of California campus. UC Santa Cruz today is an outstanding public research university committed to undergraduate education with progressive, bold, and fearless inquiry and teaching and public service. UCSC students reflect the full range of people and cultures that make up the state of California. You are developing the leaders of tomorrow, people who will be active in all sectors of society and the world while fostering a climate of inclusion. So congratulations to the University of California Santa Cruz on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of this dedication. I thank the founders, the faculty, the staff, the students for fulfilling the dreams of Governor Pat Brown, President Clark Kerr, and Chancellor Dean McHenry. Sincerely, Governor Jerry Brown. Thank you.
And I was told that the original ceremony, you can hear it on an iPod, I was told, but the original ceremony lasted 35 minutes. So I think we're really doing well because we're coming up to our very last speaker who is a leader and who is going to lead us to Founders Glen and Founders Rock. Lynn No is the chair of the Cowell Senate, so our student government has a centralized, as we have with Shaz, and each of the colleges has its own uh, governing body. And Lynn is the chair of the Cowell Senate, and she will uh, come to the podium next, and then she will lead us to our next spot. Lynn? As chairperson of the Cal Student Senate, I am incredibly honored to be here with you all. Great thanks to everybody for coming to help commemorate this very important day in our history. And now I invite all of our guests to come and gather where our community did not too long ago, 50 years today, to the Founders Glen, where the dedication of the University of California, Santa Cruz was held. Let us all process to the rock. <laughs> The bagpiper will be first, will be second, and you come on along right after us.